Hello everybody, I, I just, I've just i been moved to do what I hope is going to be a short technical video about communication stuff. Uh, but uh, before I do that, let's, let's just send out heartfelt greetings and best wishes to all of you who are out there still in the front line, still working. I was talking to a friend who's the principal of a residential school yesterday. She's still working flat out and so are all of her staff. And also to all those parents who might be in lockdown with their, their most beloved children who might nonetheless give them trying and tiring days. Best wishes and thoughts to all of you. Uh, what is it now for me? It's about uh, uh, 50 odd, 52 days in lockdown, I think. And uh, well, you have to ask my friends. I, I don't know whether I'm getting more deeply strange or not. I suspect it's uh, having some kind of effect on me. Um, but uh, this weather helps, doesn't it? It's an absolutely wonderful day here in the Malvern Hills. Um, now, uh, what, what I've been moved to talk about, I've, I've actually posted on this before, and it's about human communication and video conferencing, which, of course, isn't that wonderful that we've got this? I think I, I really would have gone completely nuts by now if I didn't have the ability to Skype and Zoom and WhatsApp with people. Uh, but uh, have you found this as well? When when you if you do a lot of video conferencing, it's it's tiring. Um, and I was I was speaking to uh, Rick Day yesterday, who's a, he was a special school principal in uh, Melbourne, not Melbourne, Brisbane, <laughs> in Queensland, um, and now works with the Queensland government as a special education advisor. Um, we were we were discussing these issues, um, and I'm going to do a little bit of detail now on what. Rick and I discussed. Um, he said he said I should write it down and put it out to people. Uh, but, but first of all, let's just go back to what was it three years ago, maybe four years ago. I put out a um, uh, a video like this talking about um, when we're doing WhatsApp conferencing with each other using video, or if we're doing Skype. Um, we, we need to think about eye contact issues because. Um, very often with whatever device you're using, are you, are you getting the hang of this already? Um, the the camera on the device is not near the video image on the screen of the person you're conversing with. So it should come out that the effect is very often like this. The person you're conversing with, you, you don't have the sensation that they're looking into your eyes and that you're making eye contact because they're looking at the image of you on the screen in order to make eye contact, but it means they're not looking into the camera. I hope that effect is coming out now because now what I'm going to do is look into the camera and you should have the effect that I'm making eye contact with you. And, um, well, that, that is a difficulty, I think. I, I'm, I'm worried about the consequences for all of us all over the world if we all now spend a lot of time conversing with each other but rehearsing conversing without making eye contact or, or very little eye contact um, and I think it's particularly an issue for um, if you're going to do as we're thinking of doing um, online stuff uh, doing online uh, workshops uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're giving an address to a group online you've really got to, I think really sort of think about making sure that you look into the camera in order that the people viewing you have the sensation that you're making eye contact with each and every one of them. Now, it doesn't have to be sustained eye contact all of the time. For all of us in normal social conversation, we don't make eye contact continuously. We do it in bursts of two or three seconds and then look away again. We've got all sorts of conventions for making sure that we don't hold sustained eye contact. Sustained eye contact is difficult. It can feel threatening. So uh, it's kind of nuanced. But nonetheless, eye contact is very, very important because it's one of the ways in which we pick up profound communication information from each other. So let's just go on to think about that. One of the things that Rick and I were talking about was, first of all, in order to understand, I think, why video conferencing is so tiring, you need to have a think about the nature of human communication. Now, because we're so good with speech, us, us homo sapiens, we get very, very focused on the speech. I mean, we're incredibly sophisticated with speech. But in fact, there's general agreement amongst communication theorists that human communication is actually up to about 90% non-verbal, uh, with speech being the sort of gloss, the polish on the top of very precise meaning. Now, what do we mean by non-verbal? Of course, we're talking about 
well, uh, tones of voice, grunts, vocalizations, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then also uh, a huge quantity actually of information, communication information is actually visual. Human beings are highly visual communicators, uh, and that's stuff like obviously eye contact and all the tiny nuances of eye contact. We pick up huge information from looking into the other person's eyes. Uh, facial expressions, think about the thousands of different kinds of facial expressions there are, body language, gesture, posture, etc. Uh, we're picking up this information at very high speed from the other person when we're talking to them. And there's an increasing recognition again in communication theory that this tuning each other, tuning into each other, is is highly visual. We we attune to each other. We set, we develop a sense of empathy while we're talking. And in actual fact, most of the processing of this huge quantity of subtle information is non-conscious or subconscious processing um, at, at very very high speed. Um, Daniel Goleman, who wrote the book uh, Social Communication, he refers to the high road and the low road. The high road is the very, very conscious processing of communication information, and the low road, this mass of very high speed, uh, very complicated processing of subconscious information. I, I, I quite like that analogy, the high road and the low road. The low road is necessary because, as he puts it, the consciousness doesn't have enough processing power, enough RAM for all of the information. Now, in our work, and you, you've seen it in our publications, we talk about um, we talk about face and mind reading the other person. That, that's the process where, when you're looking into a person's face and eyes, you're picking up much of these tiny nuances of information, and it enables you at very high speed to, to process uh, an assessment of how the other person is thinking and feeling second by second, and the other person's doing the same with you, and so you're sort of kind of psychologically and emotionally adjusting to each other uh, and to each other's emotional and psychological state moment by moment. Now, of course, in our field in recent years, uh, not just from us, but from other people, there's been an increasing recognition that this high-speed processing of this visual information from eye contacts and facial expressions, it, yes, of course, that's likely to be a central area of difficulty for people with ASD. So, having established that, I hope, obviously, one of the problems with video conferencing is it's not the real thing. You're using these instruments. You're not in the person's presence. It is much, much harder to attune and truly connect with the other person. Yet, your internal system, this subconscious system, can't get its head around that, and your internal system is striving and straining to be with the other person in the usual way. Rick and I discussed this at some length. We talked about how I have this all the time with this sensation that my, my system is striving to get down the line to the other person and really make a connection. And I think that's the bit that's really exhausting. Uh, I've, when, we have, when we have our meetings, I feel, I feel completely clapped out afterwards. And of course, in particular, the video makes it much harder to pick up the visuals. We've got fantastic video now. We, um, and we, we've got high definition video for quite ordinary purposes, yet nonetheless it's much harder to pick up all the tiny nuances that you'll pick up with ease when you're in the person's, pre person's presence, you know, facial expressions, eye contacts, body language, etc. In fact, of course, most of the conversations like this one, they're mainly head and shoulders. So there's vast areas of body language and perhaps gesture. gesture. I'm gesturing below the screen, you're not seeing it. Uh, that you're not able to pick up, they're not available to the receiver. Th then there's there's another issue with, with voice, and part of this will depend a great deal on the quality of the audio equipment that you're using with your device. Um, most phones have got pr pretty crappy speakers, frankly, uh, but basically you're only receiving a proportion of the other person's vocal output. Uh, the, the quality of the speaker will transmit certain frequencies but but not all of them uh, you'll hear all of the words probably for sure but maybe not all of the subtle nuances of the other person's communication by tone of voice and that's another issue where therefore much of the person's emotional and psychological state might might, might not be conveying to you so I hope that's helpful um, and I, I hope we well I guess what I'm, I've got on my mind as well is it's going to be inevitable isn't it that after this, 
things are going to return hopefully to some kind of normal but because of our experiences we're going to be doing a lot more of this it's going to become more the norm to have meetings in this way to video conference in this way uh, all, all of that's good up to a point because it can, can enable much more things to happen more frequently perhaps it enables and it certainly does with with my little organization with my buddies we're able to video conference and get things done much more readily than we, if we had to meet up all the time but I, I suppose I suggest we need to bear in mind always that it's a substitute it's not the real thing and certainly in giving courses we're, we're extremely reluctant and have been for a long time we're extremely reluctant to give online courses because of the, the lack of these attunement issues. Uh, nonetheless, that will probably become something that everybody does more, I suppose. But as we do that, we need to bear in mind the disadvantages, I think. It's not the real thing. It's a substitute. And we need to bear in mind the difficulties that we're going to be experiencing with it and be more conscious about them in order to, uh, I suppose, make video conferencing and communication with video more successful by recognising the difficulties. Mm. Hope that all makes sense. Thanks a lot. Stay well, stay safe.